Hey guys, you're welcome to another episode of the Founders Connect. Here I have conversations with amazing entrepreneurs who are leading tech startups in Africa. This is season, um, episode two of season two and I'm super excited. On this episode, we're going to be speaking to Tommy, the co-founder and CEO of Trove. Hi Tommy. Yeah, hi Peace. How hi. you doing? I'm doing all right. It's really good to finally meet you. Good to meet you too. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Peace Timmy, a change maker, professional and creative who is passionate about growing people and growing business. Like, comment, subscribe to my channel, and please always share my videos. It promises to always be impactful and insightful. All right. So, who is Tommy Solake? Is that how your name is pronounced? No, it's actually Tommy Sholake, but I won't oh, blame Tommy you. Tommy Sholake. Sorry. It's fine. It's fine. Tommy, uh, <laughs> just just, I, I just say how you know how to say it, but <laughs> so, but, so yeah, who fine. are you? Just like so we know Trove and we yeah. know Tommy from Trove via the emails. Yeah. But we don't really know who you are, so how do you describe yourself? Um, okay, let me see. Describe myself in three words. Uh, creative, vivacious, uh, a little bit of eccentric. Yeah. Ah. Some, a little. <laughs> it, it had, <laughs> it had Just the right amount. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Where did you grow up? Um, I grew up in Lagos. Oh, okay. So yeah. can you tell me like how growing up was like, what school you went to? Just like fill us in on everything that happened before now. Yeah. Regular Lagos, regular Lagos boy, um, <laughs> you know, did my primary school here in Lagos, moved quite a bit, you know, across like different places, you know, from ex extremes in the city, um, lived at the extreme end of the mainland, lived in the center, lived on the, you will I say island, will I say extreme end of the island too. Um, I went to uni in um, Lagos too. Um, I went to high school. Yeah, okay. Lagos. I went to King's College, mm -hmm. um, and then I went to Unilag, as you rightfully said. Yeah, that's yeah. the only school in serious, Lagos, right? Serious Lagos boy. Um, yeah, so I like, spent most of my life here. What, what did you study? I'm okay. chemical engineering. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So before you started True, you started another company called um, Who Spotted Me. I started like a number of things. <laughs> so in, in total, how many businesses did you start before True? Like real businesses? Real businesses. Or like ex experiments, uh, just, just vibing around. All of them? <sighs> probably at least, probably four or five, I guess. And probably like four, yeah. Did any of them like blow up a little bit? Yeah. So I, we had, okay, I think the closest to, um, let's like say blowing up, was uh, I had a, um, I have two stories, right? Um, I'm ready there to is one this. that was on the verge. I was very excited about and I thought like, okay, you know what, this is, you know, the, you know, business that's going to propel me to like my riches and I'm going to be <laughs> like, you know, super made from this, um, but it just never took, like took off, um, you know, that was a business um, that I had then with, you know, a couple of friends and fun story, um, Don Jazzy was an investor in the business. Uh -uh. This was that, when, what year was this? This was in 20, this was 20. 13, 2014, 2013, mm. um, you know, that's when I really learned a very critical lesson about, you know, founding businesses and about how important it is um, for founding members of a team to be very, you know, close mm. or people that, you know, build businesses to be very close. Um, I had another business, I think sometime 2015, when I left that. So what happened with that one? It's human wahala. I think <laughs> I think it's just that's just the easiest way of explaining it. Um, great business, you know, super well positioned. Had like quite a number of interesting people in it. Um, Don Jazzy was one of the people that, uh, as I mentioned. Um, but then it was just like human, human. I, I think that's the easiest way of explaining it. human wahala. We just you know had friction, especially with like a couple of people, and just had to call call the business quits. Mm -hmm. I think one person fell off at some point. Um, and then we could just never find, I won't say common ground or something again. <laughs> I just had to kill it. Moved on to something else, uh, a peer-to-peer -peer delivery business um, in 2015. Um, I think that was the first time I got a couple of grants. We got a couple of grants. Uh, got the, you know, Elumelu grant, got a couple of other grants here and there. Actually became a pseudo real business, <laughs> half real business. Um, had. Uh, I think then we had like over, so the model then was um, crowdsourced um, delivery guys. So like right. similar to the Uber model, you could have like um, regular people, students, you know, walk to make deliveries. You could have bike guys, you know, 
um, in a very crowdsourced way. You could have, you know, taxi guys and, you know, trucks and stuff. I think we had like about a couple thousand, you know, of those kind of people, you know, making revenue, had like office space, had staff. Um, okay. Yeah. Then what happened? And I fell off too. Oh, so you fell off this? <laughs> no, 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 no. The whole business, I, I don't like, it was very difficult. I, I think logistics is a very difficult business. Um, you know, irrespective of how people decide to structure it. Margins were super thin, you know, bleeding cash. Um, there are just lots of problems there. Um, so at, at some point, I just had to... This? Because you said you started in 2015. Yeah, this was like, uh, I think till 2018. 2018. So 2018. Three years. Yeah, 20, 2017, tail end of 2017, mm. early 2018. I, I, think, I think more tail end of 2017. Mm. Um, at some point, I just said, okay, you know what? It's Peace. not for me. <laughs> it's not for me. Um, yeah, and uh, like, uh, I think you said spotted. Um, yeah. That was a, what's the word? I like technology. Mm. Um, and I like to think of myself as a creative mind. And uh, I'm a very, I'm very big on like social impact. Um, and so playing around, um, I know we did, I think how that came to be was um, one of those times we we're looking to, please don't tell anybody. <laughs> one of those times we we're looking to get money, yeah. So we we're doing like, I'll go, I, I used to have, I used to be very decent at like, you know, drawing to, together like uh, proposals and stuff or like, you know, business plans and go there, present. So we're looking for like grants and everything. So they're like, okay, you guys, there's this grant here, if you can do X, <laughs> right? Um, and so we went there, idea came out of that. Um, and then I just became attached to it. I, lo I love social ventures or social mm. impact or, or anything that has a social impact to it. Um, and so that's pretty much how that came about. Um, Trove was a... So was Trove immediately after this? Trove wasn't even something I was thinking about. Oh, okay, uh, so how did that happen? Me, I'm the, I am the CTO. Um, I think one day we were sitting, we used to work somewhere on the logistics, like with the logistics business. There was this uh, Amala joint downstairs. And so like we're just, Good you know, we're just chopping it up, you know, we're just eating Amala and stuff. And, and I'm just like, so my guy used to trade crypto, right? Um, I used to do like FX, I used to do derivatives, I used to do like all these things. I used to do crypto too at some point. Um, so we're just talking about like, okay, you know what, a guy, what's the next, what's the next, uh, I want to say hustle per se, or like, you know, how can we just get like, you know, cash on the side? And it's like, okay, you know what, let's just build this crypto, tiny crypto thing. Um, coincidentally, I also had like an idea for, you know, investing in stocks, maybe just right. due to like a personal problem I had. And so like, coupled with the efforts I was making towards, you know, you know, proactively like thinking about you know, how can I, you know, hack this whole, you know, investing in the in foreign markets thing. It was very interesting that he was also thinking about that kind of stuff. Um, but then we decided like, okay, you know what, maybe we should just start this crypto thing and just be seeing maybe one, one Naira, one, one couple here and there. Um, and that's why, I, that's actually started off as a, as a joking quote. Um, <laughs> started off from Amala. Yeah, started off at the Amala joint and, you know, progressed into something else. So what was the LEDs that's true, like? It was tough. <laughs> <laughs> well, what what key you know, we, do you remember? I remember we worked out of a not even just a so we worked out of like a I won't say a store per se. Um, like some very um, funny setup. Um, I'm sure if you came into that setup, like we used to call it like the Babalao house because <laughs> there used to be like this red veil. Um, so it was so we had the previous business, we had like this um, Israeli investors. Mm. Um, they used to have, they have like this um, chain of like supermarkets um, and uh, what they call them, um, buildings in, in Lagos here. And so like, you know, they just said, okay, I said, ah, how far, we're looking for somewhere to, you know, just work on this tiny experiment. We need ex um, internet and we need um, 24 hours, like mm. um, power supply and they're like, Okay, there's this small place, blah, blah, blah. We entered the place, I saw like this <laughs> red. So they used to keep like quite a number of stuff there. So like their inventory and stuff, but there was this tiny place they carved out. But there was this red veil that they used to segment the space. So when people come inside, they'll be like, ah. What's happening Is this here? a Babalao joint? Are we trying to get, are we, are we getting sacrificed here? And so we started there. Um, and then we moved on to a coffee shop. We were at Cafe Neo for like mm. a bit. Um, 
and then I got another. Uh, how many were you? How many were you guys at this time? Uh, then we were, we were four founders, but two were not residents in the country. Right. Two used to two were in the U.S. Um, before they transitioned mm -hmm. um, to becoming full time. Um, and then, like working in Cafeneria again, we said, ah, okay, you know what? What next? Cash trapped again, <laughs> right? And then, you know, the the grants came again. What um, grants this time? It's another one, so we build something else. <laughs> <laughs> we always build it. The city here is like an amazing, you know, dev and hacker type stuff. So. Um, so we built something else again. Um, got like some, you know, tiny grants. Um, and then we use that to drink, to buy coffee and, you know, buy, <laughs> buy juice and food every other day. Um, stay there for quite some time. Um, and then I always used to keep quiet. I, I, I just got tired of like, oh, you know what, we are trying to build this thing, trying to hack it out. Something happens along the way. You have to like, you know, tell your people that, okay, you know what, you know, that's the blue. Mm. It's still, it's one year. We have to add one year to the blowing period. <laughs> um, and so like, I did like all these random things here and there, like applications. Mm. Um, I did one, I didn't tell anybody, um, which was, uh, you know, this, uh, I think VP and ARM, they had this program. Mm. Um, then I didn't tell anybody because I was just like, you know what? If it doesn't work, nobody knows. Then nobody knows, and we will just continue like pushing it the way we, the way we we we've been pushing it. And coincidentally, they they called back and said, hey, you know, really like the way you're thinking about this problem. Really like your um, background, your experience in this space. Um, like the team. Um, I really want to have a chat. Um, and 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 that was like the the u-turn or that's mm. where things started to really you know make sense it started to, that's when stuff started to click to me that okay you know what outside of the problem that i was building around like my personal problem that i was building around um and the other founders were building around um somebody that is or people that are industry vets mm. um actually have you know begun to appreciate the steps mm. that we're taking um, and looks like, okay, you know what, um, there might be some prospects here. Um, yeah, I think that was a major U-turn. Well, that was the first thing that gave like some um, indication. Like, yeah, like might, green light. I think green light. This yeah. might be the blue. Yeah, yeah, this might be the blue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Amazing. So have you guys raised fund for Trove yet? Yeah, we have. Yeah, so how how's, has fund raising been like? Did it, was it easy after that first green light? Was yeah. it hard? Did you get into any accelerator? How did that happen? Yeah, so so um, no, we didn't we didn't outside of that we didn't do any accelerators. Um, was it because you didn't apply or you just we applied for one? Okay, we applied um, one once got to the last uh, you know and the thing just became long. I just said, I'm big. I'm not doing this thing again. Um, and for me, I've always thought of you know I think nowadays you know with all the hype around tech people will lose focus of like the real thing which is it's actually a business mm. forget all the you know vibes and everything that's going around um you're actually trying to build a business and the business is supposed to be profitable mm -hmm. and once your eyes are not on that goal on the ball which is like you're actually building a business mm -hmm. right you then lose it and so for me it wasn't like you know being very carried away by all mm. the um stuff happening in the space well, let's apply let's apply let's apply let's apply the grant thing was a hack, but um, I, I just I just didn't feel like the whole you know applying. Some people take accelerators as you know do or die. Like if you don't get in DOA, you know. So I just did it like once and like I was like, no, we are not doing it again. Um, got like uh, investment from you know a couple of people in the financial space. Um, got investment from um, institutions like ARM. Um, got funding from Ventures Platform. Um, I got funding like from like quite Otumba Olumide Show Yombo. Oh, okay. That was Otumba Show. Um, yeah. Um, and then we did a seed, um, but we didn't tell anybody <laughs> before. <laughs> You know, fire us and, <laughs> <laughs> and say I can see me and comes to come and you know um, knock on the doors. Um, but yeah, just just didn't disclose for, for, for lots of reasons. Mm. Um, but yeah, so we've done we've done a pre seed and we've done a seed. Oh, nice. I guess yeah. we're we'll doing series A. Yeah, yeah. But def still not disclose. Definitely. <laughs> no, we might disclose that. That might make sense to disclose. But right now, there's there's just I, I I'm more of a 
product person and mm. I'm, I'm more of a builder mm. and so so you rather focus yeah on like I, I think it's too i it's interesting that people like you know are now so we we, we raised one naira we raised two naira mm. you know that it helps in some ways right but i, I think the for me my own mantra is like put your head down and continue to build put your eyes on the ball anything else is just unnecessary noise mm. Okay. Especially in such like very neat, like early days, like if mm. you're like precede seed, I don't think it's necessary. Mm. Just personal opinion. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but that, that's really amazing because in in tech we don't hear a lot about this. I mean, it's very normal now. You raise even p k I mean, tech I know, has right? to do something. I know. And and I guess people are doing it also because of the clouds and credibility and maybe more talent. But what you say about just knowing that the business is really about making money and making profit, yeah. and that's the most important thing. So whether you're raising or you're getting to accelerate, or you're building a business to actually, you know, make, make profit, yeah, yeah, so focus on that. Well, what has adoption on the consumer side been like on Trove? It's been great. It's been great. Um, we, I think one of the things I pride myself on, and I, like, I, I say it quite a lot, um, and a lot of the investors and, you know, people that get to know, like, look beneath the hood mm. says like okay you guys are like a very capital efficient business mm. um and a lot of the users that we've gotten have been mostly word of mouth mm. uh, you know and people telling them the, you know people telling their friends um you know have tens tens of thousands of users um in terms of numbers you know i, I, don't, I don't know what to disclose i want to disclose <laughs> but stuff is going pretty it's, it's going pretty well it's going pretty well um, started off as a you know team of um, I think we were just like four at the beginning, four co-founders. How many are you guys? Um, right now, I think we're getting twenty something or something. Wow. So, yeah. Yeah, amazing. What would you say is your edge with um, or against your competitors? What what what, 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 what makes Trove stand makes out? Why should I choose Trove over the other guys, for instance? On the surface, like both. So, so one, one thing is one thing is like we're a very you know user centric business. Mm. Um, we are a very, and I'm saying these things, I'm, I'm not trying to be very deep about like, oh, this is our roadmap and all this <laughs> stuff. But on the surface, we're a very user-centric business, you know, people-focused business. Um, outside of that, it's a human business. And what I, what, what I mean by it's a human business is, um, I, myself, I have conversations with people at 12.30 a.m. Mm. I have conversations with people at 12. I have conversations with people like late into the night. Um, and for me, all of these things like, you know, communicating with people via emails and all of that stuff um, creates for me, it's, it's, it's a different type of business. So it's not just a business set out to just, you know, gen, you know make money. Um, we like to think of ourselves as like a, you know, human business. <laughs> um, I think that and, and that's one difference mm. outside of the product. Um, I think we are the only um, people in this space or, you know, outside of, I think, Eke is very vocal himself. <laughs> um, Eke of Rise. Yeah. But outside of that, you know, we're the, you know, we're one of the only guys that I know a lot of users have direct contact with. Contact with. Um, people have my personal phone numbers. Mm. Um, we have a Telegram group. I remember getting bashed on that Telegram group. Someone's like, ah, dude, why are you here? Like it's answering, why are you answering me? Like, and I'm like, yo, like I believe, you know, leaders you know um leaders lead from the front mm. right i need to know what is happening i really want to understand you guys um what you guys are feeling your perception of the product um and for me that's the kind of business that uh, you know we focused on we're focused on building um and and that's that's one difference i think a lot of founders like lose touch mm. um once you start to gain some you know <laughs> tiny credibility or clouds you just say oh, I'm not a big boy now. <laughs> let me hire like some interns and something to manage all of that stuff yeah. so that's one difference um, differentiator outside of that you know I, I can think in terms of product um, in terms of like the breadth of like features that we have on the application in terms of like assets yeah. in terms of like um, um, the kind of tools um, that we um, put on the app to equip investors um, I think if you look at it from a product perspective too, um, critically, you see, you see, you see an advantage there. So, what would you say has been the biggest win so far? What's the biggest win? Ooh. My life? No, for the business. For the business. Well, actually, both. Let's say big. Okay, let me let me just say a big win. Mm. Let me say a big win. Um, 
Let's say it's a big win. <laughs> I don't know where that's from. Just see what's on your mind. I was very surprised when we started a seed round yeah. or started the seed round. I was like very, part, like I was very. I was talking to guys. They were like, ah, you guys want to raise X. Ah, <laughs> you don't know. You have to write your projections for hundred years and something, <laughs> something, something, something. And we closed around like two and a half weeks. Mm. Yeah. Um, so for me, that's like one of the things that um, really has been, you know, reassuring in like recent recent times um and then get like a bunch of you know similar questions like oh you know what are you guys doing and how does that differ you know from xyz mm -hmm. um and that just gave like a lot of context into um how people think about what that difference is mm -hmm. um and whether that difference even makes any sense in the first place mm -hmm. um so closing around in two and a half weeks for me you know just said okay you guys are thinking about it mm -hmm. um the right way you guys are thinking about you know um the product and thinking about the future in the right way um so for me that got me really got me hyped um i think second thing is um that you that you turn or green light moment as you called <laughs> yeah. it um where i was like okay you know what is this an experiment would this work nobody has done this before um and uh, you know all of a sudden you know things taking the 360 um just pretty much, you know, made my, um, what's the word, uh, made my, you know, the way I was thinking about the future of, you know, the idea totally of the business totally different. Amazing. So recently, um, there was this SEC circular. How yeah. does it affect or does not affect how does business? It, how does it? Yeah, it affects, actually. <laughs> let, me, let me not fluff you around. Um, yeah, so, so but um, it's not a, you know, SEC, the SEC is a, I like to think of them as a proactive organization, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we've been talking to them. It's not like, a, oh, you guys need to shut down right now. It's, you know, it's a very nascent space, right? right? Especially like well tech, well tech um, within the context of like investing in like securities and stuff, um, pretty early days. Mm -hmm. um, across the continent, if I'm thinking of products that do, I think Nigeria has like the largest share of mm -hmm. like, you know, trading slash wealth management type platforms. Um, thinking of a trove like products across the continent, mm, less than 10. Mm. Probably, that allow you micro invest, probably mm. six at most. Mm. Um, and so it's very nascent. Of those, of those six, I think probably three or four are from Nigeria. Mm. Um, and then you see people get into the space, you see a lot of bad actors. The BVN thing, for example, I got some context into it. Um, you know, people started using it for criminal purposes <laughs> you know people start so somebody will send like a random string of like i don't know how long bvns are probably nine or ten digits um and try to like get people's like details so i query right. to see like uh, i just sent like some random number two five six six eight nine query you know a db and you know wait for okay. it to return something back to me um and so people just started doing all sorts of things similar here like you know sec is just like okay you know what we don't really understand you know what you guys are doing per right. se um we like what you're doing you know we see the prospects and like what you guys are doing but you know just so bad actors don't creep into the mm. space you know how can we you know sanitize or regulate that space quite a bit so it's not like a, oh you people must shut down right so it's um, like let's work together to let's let's to let's together. let's you guys come right let's let's sit down let's dialogue let's let's see whether there's something um that could potentially come out of this and let's see how like it can fit into our own mandates as um, a regulator right right so sec top two mandates for sec is um, I think one is um, what they say again protect investors interest or the interest of investors mm -hmm. and the second one is to grow the Nigerian like capital markets mm -hmm. ecosystem number one is always to protect mm -hmm. and so the first thing is like oh, you guys are shipping you guys are doing so, so hold on. you guys are doing this come here let's let's have a conversation mm -hmm. let's you know Let's see whether you guys are backdoors, backdoor carrying money and laundering it to Lebanon or something, <laughs> you know. So, so yeah, but it's going on good. You know, we're engaging. The rest of the guys are also. Um, and it looks like there's light. There's, there's good light at the end Amazing. of the tunnel. So what's, what's your life outside of True right now? What's the life outside of the life. CEO of True? <laughs> <laughs> have a life outside of True. Um, let me see. Um... Uh, if I if I if I if I have 
the opportunity to watch a movie. I really appreciate it. Opportunity. I have an opportunity today. I'm trying to force myself to, and you know, it's part of the struggles of building a business. When you're when you're building, you know, there's a lot of dedication with regards to your time mm -hmm. and commitment with regards to time that you have to put to building it. Perhaps things stabilize or not, you know, when you get to, you know, a billion dollars in revenue, I do not know. I've not gotten <laughs> there, you know, but uh, yeah, it's pretty hectic. I'm not, I, I, I don't know that I have the life outside, life outside of the be very honest. Like before coming here, I was like, oh, sh could I sleep? Let me sleep for one hour. Let me sleep for one hour. <laughs> I tried to sleep for one hour. And then I was like, it's time and my fiance was like, dude, it's time to get up. I was like, oh no, snap. <laughs> Um, but yeah, if I have time to watch a movie or do something, um, something recreational, yeah, <laughs> super glad. Okay, so my final question, um, what would you say has been the two biggest lessons so far in your entrepreneurship journey, starting from all the experiments, yeah. the grants that you've done, yeah. like just top two business lessons? Hmm, top two, top two, top two. Um, I think number one would definitely be um, I think stay 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 focused right um, um, it's very easy to to start building a business um, and uh, get distracted get discouraged um, but ultimately, like people that do that, you know, fall by the wayside. The only thing, like I tell people that start or that are founders, I say, the only sure thing is you betting on yourself yeah. and you being very deliberate and consistent about it, right? Um, eventually something happens, right? Even if you have one, like VP, for example, now Kola, you know, will tell you that, uh, you know, he'll rather bet on a former founder mm. than like some guy that is just fresh off the boats or something um, and the reason why is like everything is a there's always a lesson to learn right and then you take one step even if it's not one monumental step it's still a tiny step regardless and you know if you're not consistent and deliberate about those things um, you know then you know it might look like things are not going to or things are not you know popping up for you um, I think second thing is, um, let me see, I won't say it's a lesson per se, but um, there is a lot of um, hype um, around like entrepreneurship. You know, the only things that make the spotlight are like the beautiful stories that tell, <laughs> this guy just made one billion, you know. Um, the Bloombergs and all these guys and the Forbes, they like they like all those things. They tell you, oh, this guy just started a business. He just sold this business for 500 million. This guy just, his, his stock just went up by $2 and the guy just made 600 billion Lucky. US dollars today. It's a very, it's a very grueling. It's a very difficult. It's a very, it could even be a <laughs> depressing <laughs> journey. Um, and um, you need to be like, super super i think it's, it still even ties back to what i just said before um super super focused um the grind is is very difficult um and so if you're not uh, what's the word if you're not really convinced mm -hmm. about what you're doing uh, definitely then at the end of the road I, I i don't see anything you know monumental or i don't see anything great at the end of the road so for me, it's just like, you know, um, all the hype that happens around um, sometimes can be very deafening and very mm. distracting. And uh, entrepreneurship is extremely difficult. Extremely it's, it's, it's an, I, I think extremely is an understatement. <laughs> if there's extremely, extremely, um, you know, that would be the word to use. Amazing. So stay focused. I know that it's a hard road. Yeah. But if you stay focused, then you might just come out on the good side at the end of the day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. All right. Uh, any final, final, final last words? For, for who? For for the viewers. For the viewers. Yeah. Stay I, I don't focused. know. Stay focused. <laughs> 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 Amazing. Thank you so much to me for staying yeah. here and thank you for, you know, just telling us about your journey and telling us about how it started and how it's going. And we're seriously rooting for you guys. Like, seriously rooting for you guys. Gracias. Thank you so much. And thank you so much, viewers, for staying to watch this video. Make sure that you don't leave this channel without subscribing. All right? Peace out. <laughs>